This is the Transformers Generations Studio Series number 38 from the movie Bumblebee Voyager Class Optimus Prime. I picked up this figure at my local Toys R Us, 2,300 pesos or about $46. Let's look at the packaging. And here is Optimus Prime out of packaging. And need I say it, the figure looks absolutely gorgeous. I mean, the hype is absolutely real on this figure. This is the figure a lot of the Movieverse fans have been waiting for. It is a G1-esque Movieverse Optimus Prime. Was this so difficult, Mr. Michael Bay? So Travis Knight apparently is the savior of the Movieverse. That whole Bumblebee movie really really was a big fan service to all g1 fans and and a better appreciation of the movie verse the figure is a fantastic representation of that optimus prime we saw in the movie bumblebee and this figure captures a lot of the essence of how optimus looked in that particular movie a lot of the g1-esque g1-ish uh details about the figure, that chest, the arms, the legs, and even the alt mode, as we will see later, is so reminiscent of G1. The figure sports a G1-esque classic Optimus Prime head sculpt. It's a little stylized. Uh, you get a lot of details on that battle mask, the side of his cheeks, even the crest on his forehead, ears. But it is Optimus Prime. That whole squarish chest just completes that classic look. If you look at his abdomen, you get some details of the inner workings of the robot. Lots of details here and there. Very nice flake, glossy plastic on the thighs. G1-ish feet. Although I will comment uh, on the feet. The feet kind of look small. In in proportion. I mean, it's okay. It's all right. It's just that we've always known Optimus to have very a little bit exaggerated or oversized lower legs. This one's a little bit squat for me, just a little bit. Arms, you got a little bit of kibble here, some back kibble right there, but it's fine. Folds up nicely. You get some nice smokestacks. Pretty cool. Okay, articulation for the figure. It's got a ball jointed neck, waist swivel. Uh, hinge shoulders, forward and backward, a separate hinge to go in and out. He's got a bicep swivel, hinge elbow, and the way the elbow has been sculpted, it looks like it's going to move side to side. But it does move up and down like this. He's got a swivel wrist. He's got a hinge, ball hinge, effective ball hinge hips, a hinge that moves it forward and backward side to side, the separate hinge that moves it side to side, thigh swivel, hinge knees, go all the way up to there, hinge ankles, and a pivot, a rocker pivot. The figure also comes with a nice diorama background. Uh, this is Golden Gate Bridge, the last scene we see in the movie Bumblebee. The figure stands roughly six and three quarters inches tall, just under seven inches tall. And here he is with other Studio Series Voyager class Optimus Prime. This is number five and number 32. And here he is with Power of the Primes Leader class Optimus Prime and War for Cybertron Siege Voyager class Optimus Prime. So the figure comes with his nice trademark blaster and here is the War for Cybertron Siege Blaster. Comes with a nice instruction sheet. Now let's talk about quality of plastic. It feels a little flimsy, I have to admit. I mean, it, it feels like what knockoffs would use, especially here in the neck piece, the next neck joint, which we'll talk about when we transform. The blue pieces, red pieces, they feel a little bit light and, and soft and flimsy, um, which is sad. Uh, same for these pieces, but the gray pieces, they're okay. Um, yeah, headpiece, okay. 
uh, that's why he feels not as heavy as you thought he would be. He feels a little bit heavy on the torso side, but the limbs, they're a little bit light. Uh, paint apps, you got tons of silver and gray and blue on him. I love that they didn't spare expense on the silver. We get a lot of gunmetal gray here and there. We get nice silver highlights here, here, which is great. Even the rims have been painted. So that's pretty cool. You get hips painted right there and the head sculpt just magnificently painted. Very, very nice. So let's transform Bumblebee Optimus Prime and it, it can be a little tricky, particularly the legs and some parts of the arms, but if you do it step by step, uh, it should be okay, okay? So, um, <clears throat> first thing you wanna do, why don't we do the arms? Okay, just fold them up like this, like this and like this, okay? And then there is a joint here, which I didn't talk about in articulation, but it is not really meant for articulation. You just do it, you rotate 90 degrees the forearm. It's a forearm swivel joint. Interesting. Then what you want to do is you want to pop this down, pop this up like that, and fold these out. Like this, like that. And what you want to do is you want to rotate that upper torso. Okay. And to do so, you want to make sure that the chest is opened up all the way. If you just try and rotate it this way, these things are gonna bump into these things. So make sure it's all the way open, like that. Go ahead and untab the head. Now, this is the tricky bit I was telling you guys about. This piece is not on a pin joint, it's on a friction joint. So the first time I did it, it popped off immediately. So if you don't want it popping off, you have to slide it. The instructions just tell you just pop it out, but just slide it out like that. And this thing will pop off right here one too many times once you're transforming him. So rotate. Take like this. Okay. And we should be good to go. Okay. And then at this point, I want to just bring this down like this, just to clear everything, okay? Wheels, those are gonna stay right here. So fold this thing down like that. Fold these out like this, okay? Head is gonna stay right here. And this is, this is a little bit tricky. You gotta push it in right there. Now, getting that thing out is the problem. Okay, because as I said, this thing is on a, it's not on a hinge, so it's going to be very difficult to just, yeah, like I said, this thing's just going to pop off. So once you're transforming him back into, into robot mode, you got to pop it off like that. And it's a shame. I mean, they could have, I don't know how they could have done it. I wish they would have made the tabs a little bit shallower or something so that this thing doesn't just tab in too hard but that's the way it is okay fold the arms this way and this transformation will sound, will look very familiar you fold the arms this way and then swing it down this way okay same with this one fold the arms this way and then swing the forearms this way okay and then just tab that head in right there and that's that that's the we're trying to form the front part of the cab okay go ahead and close this like this okay fold these out and tab them here like that same thing here fold these out tab them here and you can already see how flimsy the the plastic bit is it's a little translucent right here so yeah okay tab it here tab it there right there okay <clears throat> these pieces they just fold down right here fold down like that fold like this fold down like that okay and we're looking good 
these pieces just fold up like this that same with this one Coming up like this like that okay and the front grill just clip it on like that it's going to tab in right here and right here That's the front part of the truck. And at this point in time, you know what? I, I would have actually appreciated it more if Hasbro would have kept the the leg pieces solid. At this point, it, it looks pretty solid. And I would have appreciated as a truck mode if they had just, you know, made the feet fold this way and collapse into that. And it's a solid, solid leg piece. I would have I would have actually preferred that. And it actually looks right, excuse me. And it actually looks okay as a truck mode, even if you don't transform the legs. It actually looks more solid. But there is a transformation, and sadly, uh, the, it hollows out, and a lot of the flimsy bits do come out. You get to see a lot of the flimsy bits. So open the gas tanks right there, and then uh, fold these up like this. Fold these out. Even the way these all these pieces come together. Um, it looks great uh, aesthetically, but functionally, the, the way they tab in is there's a tab right there's a tab right there, and there's another tab right here for that and that piece. So they can it's like a three way tab, and it just every time you try and pose the figure, it just comes off, which is which is very annoying. But aesthetically, it looks fantastic. So transform you gotta pop this out and tab it in right here same as this one tab it in right there and that really um, hides that whole thigh piece uh, and the, the back side of the thigh piece and makes, makes it a more solid piece right here okay and then what you want to do is these pieces I'll fold them like that like this and then you're gonna go up like this and like this Okay. okay, transforming the feet, what you want to do is you want to extend that whole ankle piece right there, up to there. Same with this one, just extend it and put that whole heel piece underneath. That will give you enough room to rotate the foot piece like this and like that. And then make sure it's at a good angle. And then what you want to do is you want to swivel that entire leg piece on the underside like this. Go ahead and flip out the trailer hitch, that. Do the same on the other side, swing it all the way like that. And they're gonna combine like this, okay? But before you do that, you wanna make sure that these pieces have combined first because they're gonna go attached here at the back of the cab. So, what you wanna do is make sure everything's folded in. Oh, that never happened before, okay. Fold these pieces like this. Make sure they snap in nicely like this okay and then what you want to do is let me show you here better angle uh, it's a flared tab right there and a hook tab right there and what you want to do is you just want to tab them in together I think it's best to do it that way before combining them here the instruction says to combine them here first before tabbing in so yeah okay just position them like this Okay, and they're going to tab in right there on those pegs right there, these pegs right here, and then these these peg holes to those pegs right there. So make sure everything's lined up. Okay, everything's nice and peachy. And then these two, they're just gonna tab in like there. The trailer hitch tabs into the other side like that. And this one tabs in here. All right, that essentially is the truck mode. And like I said, um, it would have been nicer if you had all the feet bits, the parts of the legs on this side of the truck. It would have been more solid truck, but as it is, there's a lot of hollowness into it. You can see, like it's like a half-built, um, half-built powertrain or something. I mean, there is a there's that huge, huge gap 
in the middle of his legs. But you don't see it from all these the other angles. You just see it on top. And then the gun just fit it nicely right there. So it rolls okay. I mean, yeah, I, I was actually impressed that it rolls actually pretty smooth. Now in the 80s, the original G1, Generation 1 Optimus Prime was supposedly a Peterbilt or a, um, a Freightliner, Argosy Freightliner uh, COE or cab over engine truck. So I'm not sure which one it was. It was a Peterbilt or a Freightliner, but here are some images that might help us out. Uh, this is the COE. Yeah, it kind of looks like it. It's a little too squarish, a little bit, but the different models in the 70s and the 80s. And I think, you know, Hasbro did a wonderful job trying to capture uh, the Optimus Prime uh, truck cab. And here's the Peterbilt. Yeah, you get those similarities here and there. Uh, the visor, the wind, windshield, and the front grill. So, not too bad, the gas tanks. Very, very 80s design. Uh, very 80s design of this particular alt mode. Considering that, you know, in the movie Bumblebee, this was supposedly a um, Cybertronian Optimus Prime and uh, not, not an Earth-based Optimus Prime. And here he is with uh, other alt modes of Optimus Prime Voyager class figures like the Siege Optimus Prime and number five studio series Optimus Prime. So he's a good scale. It's actually pretty big in alt mode especially uh, compared to this previous Studio Series Optimus Prime. Definitely not in scale, but this one with the Siege uh, Optimus Prime, he's, he's right there. And, you know, in the same year we get two G1, G1-esque, G1-ish looking uh, Voyager class Optimus Prime. And I'm sure a lot of fans are very, very pleased with that. And here he is with Studio Series number one, the Camaro Bumblebee. Uh, they look really great together. Uh, but let's face it, this is what we really all wanted to see in that final moment of the movie, that uh, Volkswagen Beetle Bumblebee rolling up with the uh, Freightliner COE Optimus Prime. Oh my goodness, make it happen. Let's go, Travis Knight and Lorenzo de Bonaventura. I hear they're planning on doing a sequel to Bumblebee, but putting uh, the Optimus Prime movie on hold to give way to a sequel to The Last Knight? The Night King? Oh, come on. The Bayverse is already dead. I think they should just move on. It's the Nightverse that everybody's is just excited about not the Bayverse anymore so come on Mr. Bonaventura just stick with Travis Knight do more of this you've already admitted it is a reboot so why why continue with the old Bayverse uh, Transformers movies it's time now is the time for the Nightverse and I think they should go ahead and do more of the Bumblebee movies and Optimus Prime standalone movies instead of a sequel to The Last Night. But yeah, they look great. They look great together. It's perfect scale. Pseudo series doing its job, getting the scale right as well in alt mode. So some final thoughts on the figure. The figure, boy, I don't think I need to say it. This is an absolute must-have. It is going to get a 10 out of 10 for me. It is a breath of fresh air for all of us movie collectors, movie verse, Transformers collectors. And it's a great, great fusion of the G1 Classic Optimus Prime with the Movieverse Optimus Prime. And it'll look so well, so nice on your display shelf together with all your other Optimus Prime. I think Hasbro did a wonderful job on this figure. I do hope we get to see more of him in succeeding Transformers films. And best of luck to everybody hunting him down because I'm pretty sure this is probably going to be one of if not the most sought after studio series figure in the entire line so hope you've enjoyed this little video review this has been the transformers generations studio series number 38 from the movie bumblebee voyager class optimus prime thanks for watching